Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name is Nehemiah, and today we are looking at this little hunk of metal, the Micro Typhoon. This is a sharp by design knife. The designer is Brian Nadeau, and this particular one was made by Riot Knives. So not not a custom, kind of like a mid tech type of a deal. I didn't. I wasn't really looking for this knife. I just kind of came to me in a trade. And it's just, you know, one of the funny things about life. Sometimes they just give you something that you didn't expect. So before we get into the dent, let's do a size comparison. Now, <laughs> you can see that is a pair of three. It is a very small knife. I have to zoom out a little bit compared to what the frame of it actually looks like. So, three inch blade, same as the Para 3. This is the Micro, so one would expect it to be a small knife. The PM2 is a 3.44 to give you an idea. And another couple comparisons here that might be relevant later. I've got my Olamic Busker and then my A to A4, which I really enjoy this knife. I have a review. If you're interested, you could check that out. And then next we'll do a weight. And then I do want to compare the weight on a couple things. So this by itself comes in at 2.71 ounces, under an ounce an inch. This is a this is a featherweight. Comparing it to my Alamic Busker, which has a two and a half inch. It's lighter than my Alamic Busker. What? And then my A2A4, which has got a lot of carbon fiber on it, still lighter than this. This is a slightly bigger blade. This is a 3.25 inch, but still, it even beats this guy, which is interesting nonetheless. So, might zoom in a little bit here. Whoa, earthquake. All right. Let's get into the dent, the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this Micro Typhoon. First off, the blade shape. I am a huge fan of this blade shape. I, If I was to just draw a picture of like the most practical blade I could think of, it would probably be something like this. Jimping, practical. Swedge, practical. Helps with the ye old stabby stabby. Nice draw point. You've got flat edge, you got belly. Like what what could you want? Serrations? No. No serrations. This blade is perfect. Might not be in the category of innovative, but that doesn't mean it's bad and it doesn't mean that it, it shouldn't be done the, just the right way. And thumbs up on that. Next, when you close the knife, you cannot see the blade at all, which is awesome. I cannot touch that blade with my finger. There's no backspacer, but there is zero chance of me getting cut on that backspacer. Considering how small this knife is, that's no small achievement. Jimping. I already mentioned the jimping on the blade. As far as the actual feel of it, it's a little bit more pronounced than you might expect. Um, you can definitely feel it, but not in a bad way. It's not digesting your thumb in any way. Uh, but it definitely helps to give you some purchase. You don't have a finger choil, so having you know some really practical, aggressive jimping, I'm totally okay with. I have not had a problem with this at all, and I appreciate that it's there. Next, the flipper tab. Now, when you're looking at the knife, the flipper tab is pretty prominent. You know, if you were to like measure to the height of the the knife the percentage of the flipper tab that's sticking out there is pretty big but i don't mind it at all because it is actually very comfortable to use there's no jimping on the flipper tab but the angle and the curvature it's just got that perfect little finger rest and so i can do push button if i want which is excellent works great i can also do the light switch which is just as good. So this is probably my favorite flipper tab I've had. I haven't had many, 
And that's saying something, because I really, really, really like the practicality of my A2, A4. I would say this fires out just as easily, but the jimping is there, and it's a little bit more aggressive if I do it over and over and over, where this one is comfortable. And to be honest, the profile of the knife is such that that sticking out, it's curved down. So like getting in to your pocket, it's not you know poking up at you or like a flat shelf. And so I, I was carrying this knife and I had zero problems. And the knife is just so small anyway that you're never gonna have a problem with this flipper tab. So if you think this flipper tab is a problem in the pocket or for the finger, get that out of your mind right now. It's just not. The ergonomics in general are fantastic. Now, this part is always, you know, subjective. I have medium hands, I would say, and this is perfect for me. I've got a full four, four finger grip, no problem. My pinky's not falling off. I, I have to work hard to get my pinky off, so everything sits exactly where it wants to be. Uh, unlike the small Sabenza, this is close enough to the blade that I don't I don't feel the need to like put my finger here like I do on some knives. It, it's happy where it is. So excellent, not excellent. I mean, it is excellent, but I didn't put it in the excellent because my entire list just can't be in the excellent. You know what I mean? Uh, it's in my decent. Last thing in the decent is the blade steel, which kind of a side note, there's very lit little written on this blade. I took the knife apart and inside on the blade where you normally couldn't, wouldn't be able to see it, you can uh, find where it marks that it's M390 steel, which is grade A steel. That's awesome. I also like Brian Nadeau's signature there. That's really classy. I think that's nice. And just, it's a clean look, guys. It's a really, and girls, it's a clean look. I like it. All right, so let's move into the, the excellent. Now, I'm not just limiting one excellent or two excellent things on my excellent list. If it's excellent, I put it on there, unless I feel like the entire list is going to be excellent, like I mentioned. I've got five things in the excellent. Hang on to your britches. All right, number one, this clip is the best clip I have ever experienced. So unlike most clips, you've got, you know, like a normal clip here. You've got the opening here, and then it comes down to a point where it pinches against the knife, right? And you gotta have a little shelf so you can tuck in. Most clips are like that. Some do detent ball type, ceramic balls, whatever. Very normal clips, okay? But this little lift up can be a problem sometimes. It like kind of pokes you. This one is mild. This one is so bad, I had to contact the maker so that they can make me a new clip. That's like the hardest part to get right. If it's too small, then you can't get things under there, and if it's too big, it just makes the knife uncomfortable. Not to mention you want deep carry, which my A2A4 is not deep carry, and even my busker, you know, it's enough, but it's still a chunk of the knife coming out. This has an extreme deep carry pocket clip, that's a part of the knife. There's no screws on the outside to access. It's like incorporated into the back spacer. And then it's got this completely different design where it does like a smile, where it makes contact right in the middle. And so what it, what it does is this doesn't have to be such a sharp, acute angle up. It can be kind of subtle so that in the hand, it feels like there's not even a clip. It's amazing. It's like a giant contoured kind of press against any part of your hand and it just conforms to it. But I have plenty of give and it's very easy to sli slipe, swipe it in, slice it in. Don't slice this into your pocket. There's other ways to get it into your pocket. So this is awesome. It goes all the way down to where you have just enough to pinch the knife and get it out, no problem. Gets on easy, disappears in the pocket, you don't feel it. Disappears in the hand, you don't feel it. Wow, best clip. I've ever seen. Excellent. Next, the detent system. This is not your average run-of-the-mill detent ball. Ooh, does it have a ceramic detent ball, Nehemiah? No, no, it doesn't. It has its own little ramp thing. So, I'm gonna bust out that flashy light for this. All right. 
So there's a little ramp right there. So you know how some people put a detent ramp, there you go, on the blade. This is like the opposite idea. The detent isn't a ball at all. The detent is a ramp. So what that does is several things. When you open the knife, like you break that initial detent, so that's like one jolt of like expended energy. And then as the knife old, uh, opens, you would normally have another little jolt here where that detent ball is collapsing onto the lock bar. I will demonstrate. So if my knife is almost open on this A2A4, you see the lock bar, look right here. As it moves out, it collapses one level where the detent ball is now off the blade, but the lock bar is still on the blade. And so you have this donk, donk. There's two movements there. And it goes <clears throat> both open and close. I have to, when I close it, donk, donk, and then it closes. So what happens is if you're like trying to, you know, you get it off that first initial lock bar, but it hasn't made it to the detent ball, and you're trying to like shake your knife shut, Sometimes you'll accidentally pop the ball back into spot, into place, and your knife is locked again. And so there's those two like letter, ladders that it has to go on. But this knife doesn't do that. So it's that little ledge is on the knife blade, and then it slides down, and it's one click. The little insert here is a part of that little shelf. And so there isn't that two level kind of click, click. Once I break it, once I move the slide over here, there is no click until the very end, which is perfect. So the end result is you have very smooth action, smoother action than you even know like what's going on. It's not, it's not just, oh, this is, you know, stainless steel ball bearings and it's lubed up well and it's properly lined and blah, 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 blah. Therefore it has good, you know, action and it's not just a really hard detent so that and it rockets out it's not actually that strong of a detent but it doesn't need to be because that that loop, uh, ramp makes it come out very easily so the action on this is a little bit different than you would expect i would say the detent on my a2a4 is stronger so it definitely has a more authoritative whack out but it's also not near as controllable or subtle if I want it to be. I can control kind of how this blade comes out. I can be quieter or I can really, you know, hammer it home. And again, I'm not moving my wrist at all when I'm doing this. So that detent is innovative and it's extremely practical. The one downside is that you're not going to have quite the drop shut of like a Grimsmo or whatever because the you've got more of the surface of that little ramp is pushing on the blade. So it's very smooth to close, but it's not fall shut. Personally, I think it's exactly where it should be, where I don't have to push it the whole way. I can give it a little shake or whatever, but it gets the job done. Next, the action itself. So I just went over that, but I just, I hope this is coming across to you guys, just how easy it is to open this knife. Uh, both, like I said, the push button, which if you want more of an authoritative open, you could do the push button and you get that a little bit. But I like the light switch where it's quick, it comes out, but I'm not scaring anybody. Now, I haven't really talked about the size other than just how small it is. And this is, again, very personal of you know what size knives you like. I have a medium hand. I take this to work where there's not any knife people really, a couple people. Uh, so I need to be careful about like scaring people or whatever. And I also don't want a lot of things in my pocket because I EDC a lot of stuff. This is like the perfect EDC knife in my opinion. It's extremely light. It's straight in the pocket. It's easy to get in and out of your pocket with this clip. There is zero hot spots on the knife incredibly practical blade, awesome action. It's a small knife. I wouldn't want it any smaller. Like even comparing it to my Busker, just the size of it, it's got a much longer blade, but you could tell it. this is bulkier. 
you know, this is, uh, this is, I don't know, like a Cadillac or something. And this is like a Porsche. It's just so thin and small in the pocket. And it weighs less than this knife, even though it has a whole half an inch more usable blade. So this is blinged out, looks cool. This is just the epitome of practicality and size. Awesome, awesome. Lastly is the price. Now, for all intents and purposes, this may as well be a custom knife, in my opinion. Like the quality is up there with your $500 knives. I really think this can compete. Again, you might have some flashier, you know, finishes on the blade. This is M390. It's awesome steel, but, you know, it's just a brushed finish. It's not, you know, anything mirror-like or anything like that. Um, there's no mo Moku Tai or Timascus or anything fancy-dancy on this. This is, you know, G10 in the white part, titanium. So being a Riot kind of mid-tech, the price is about $330. I went to Brian Nando's website. He's got these things available right now, which is unbelievable. I almost want to buy another one. Am I crazy? Uh, $330 for this knife is fantastic. I, it makes me sick to my stomach to think that people are paying four to $500 for Sebenzas, small Sebenzas especially, when this thing exists. This is... In completely superior to a, a small Sebenza in every way. Really, I I don't know, maybe you don't get 20 years out of it. I don't have any reason not to expect that I wouldn't. You know, something this small you're not using to like cut your way out of a, a mountain or anything. So the price is just the cherry on the top. I, I think this is excellent and I, I have very little negative to say, but I've got a couple things. So let's move into the nitpicks. Number one, the decoration little balls on this uh, pivot screw, I could take it or leave it. I think it looks fine. I don't like the practicality of these just being little crap trappers. Um, it's going to be kind of a pain in the neck to clean those out. Hasn't been so bad so far, but I'm sure it will eventually be. Next is kind of like my A2A4. When you have the blade open, you can see down here kind of the grime from that detent track. Um, this is about as nitpicky as you can get. I mean, it's such a small knife. It's going to be hard not to have part of that come out visible. So yeah. And then the terrible, terrible, terrible. The terrible is you probably don't have one of these knives and I feel sorry for you. That that's, I feel sadness in my heart because there are people that want a knife and either can't afford it or don't know about this knife and how awesome it is. And you just don't have one and I'm sad for you. That's the terrible part about this knife. So who is this knife for? Somebody that knows about it and somebody that has the money to buy it. Uh, this is the 15th of September. Go to Brian Nando's website and buy whatever knives he has left. Go do it. This is awesome. This is Nehemiah signing out. I hope this was useful to you, and I'll check you guys out in the next video. Bye.